Hey everybody, welcome back to the Airsoftology Monday Q&A show, the show that answers your questions, helps you out in a pinch, and also helps promote other YouTube channels. Actually, it's right toward the end of the video, if you guys first time here, I do a promotion, like I just basically help another channel. I don't promote it, no charge, no fee. Just pick one out from the comment section below. So if you have a channel, put it down there. Also, if you have a question, about Airsoft, anything advanced, technical questions, whatever, throw it at me, I will do my best to get it answered for you. Also, don't forget, I got a web store which helps support the show. Links over here in the corner, you can click over there. I got some cool merch you can pick up, including some custom patches and things like that. Anyway, now that you know how it works and everything else, let's get on to what you're really here for, and that's your questions in the Tipman mail call. Steven Lopez writes, Hey Jonathan, I've been trying to figure out how to see if my gun's negative or positive. I've seen videos, but they don't really explain how to tell if your flash hider is positive or negative, and was wondering if you could show or maybe help me. Sure, no problem on this one. Negative and positive threads. Uh, it's also known as clockwise and counterclockwise. So positive being clockwise, negative being counterclockwise. It's how you turn the thread or the flash hider to put on. In fact, uh, okay, we'll use this. I got a uh, PTS, what is this? I got a Griffin Armament PTS one. We'll just pop this sucker open here. Yep, brand new package for my project gun. And if I can dig it out of here, boy, they do a good job packaging these things. Let's get right in there, huh? There we go. All right, so we got a flash hider here. Now, the question is, is this one positive or negative? Now, I know this is a negative threaded adapter. Now, I know that because, well, almost all airsoft guns, with the exception of a few, are negative, 14 millimeter counterclockwise. That means when you put it on, instead of twisting it to the right, turning to the right, you know, like the old righty tighty lefty loosey, you're actually going to do it opposite. You're going to put it on left. You're going to turn it left, and that puts it on. So when you put it on the end of your barrel, like this, you got a sniper rifle here, uh, you'd put it on, and instead of twisting to the right, I'm gonna twist it to the left to put it on. Now, this one is positive. It's actually kind of different threads. So this one, I'm gonna take off like normal, so it'll be left to loosen, right to tighten. So this one, I'm going left all the way off, and it comes off. So this is positive threads here. The way to tell is just kind of look in here and see where the threads start. If you look on the threads, the very first thing on the threads kind of spiral down. If you look and that first thread, when you're looking at it, starts and goes to your right. It goes to your, well, it's kind of opposite of the camera, but it goes to your right. When you're looking at it, it goes to your right and it kind of starts to spiral that way. It means it is positive threaded. If the spiral starts to the left and goes down that way, so like the, the beginning one kind of goes that direction, then it's negative. That's a quick way to look at this. You can do the same on this and kind of see how they match up. It's the opposite way. So this one to put back on, since it's positive, will go on this way. Now this is the exception to the rule. Most airsoft guns are not positive like this one. They are going to be negative which is like this, right? So you'll take your orange flash hider off, if you can do that where you live, and you're gonna take that by turning it to the right to take it off. You're gonna take this, you're gonna put it on by the left, um, and then, so like this is it. Now, unfortunately, this thread adapter is positive. It's for the Aries Strikers or that one, um, so it won't fit this. I mean, you can try, but what's gonna happen is called cross-threading, which means uh, like it won't be right. It won't work. So anyway, that is the difference. Uh, chances are, unless you own a G and P airsoft gun, the GMPs are going to be positive threaded for the most part, almost all of them are. Good luck, if you're gonna pick something out, is going to be counterclockwise, negative 14 millimeter or negative threads, uh, that will give you the correct one for airsoft. GMP, almost all their guns that uh, fit M4 style flash hiders or these are gonna be positive threaded. You can get an adapter that changes it uh, from positive to negative. You can pick those up. It's called a gender changer. You can find those as well. So that's uh, kind of a mystery solved on if you guys are curious if you have positive or negative threads on your airsoft gun barrel. Sky Phantom writes, because I'm below the age of 18, my airsoft field requires me to have a solid, non-mesh lower face mask. However, all the ones I've tried, I can't see down my sight because it's too bulky. Do you know of any face masks that fit the requirements but still allow me to use my optic? So I was gonna say with non-mesh, I was gonna recommend, I know this is the Tipman Mail Call, I'm not just saying this because of them, they make a hybrid mask that's like a paintball mask up front, but down below they do a metal mesh, it's all attached to one piece, but if they won't let you do the mesh, even though it's attached to a mask, then I'm gonna say your best bet is going with a premium paintball mask, being the Tipman EVS, oh actually it's the Empire EVS, or doing like a die. Both of those, die I5 or I4, both of those are fantastic 
fantastic ma uh, masks or goggle system, they call them paintball goggles. Um, they are really low profile the way they fit your chin here and allow you to get the best sight purchase because this part is solid but has just a little bit of give to it. By far the best. Unfortunately, the bad news is we are talking about a very premium price tag to go with these. They are high, um, very high end on the uh, expense list. Uh, you're going to spend a lot and a lot, a lot of money to get them, but it is worth it in my opinion. Both of them are fantastic masks. I've had an i4. I've used i5s. I currently have an EVS uh, from Empire. I, I love them all. I've switched over to EVS. I, I just kind of like the, the way the goggles, how clear they look. That's just me, my personal preference, but you will be totally happy with either purchase, um, either of those are just fine, uh, whether you go the die route or the other route. Um, that is my thought for you. I know I wish I had something more cost effective for you, but again, face and eye protection to me is very important. Uh, these have interchangeable lenses. You can replace them. You can change the color of them so if they get scratched. <laughs> They're thermal so they won't fog unless it's like a crazy humid day. There's a lot of positive reasons to get these. I just wish the only negative is the price tag on these. They're very expensive. They're well north of 100 US dollars. Um, but again, you, you do get what you pay for. Uh, I've been very happy with mine. So yeah, I, I kind of hope that helps and sorry about the bad news on the price tag, but you're gonna be very happy if you pick one of those up and they're gonna last you a very long time. Coma writes, hey, when I'm shooting my airsoft gun, it sounds like I'm shooting metal and my motor feels like it's heating up fast. After 30 shots, my hand starts to sweat. My gun's a GMG CM16 Raider, LiPo with 11.1, 13 one gears, and the spring is a 100 or something, not really sure. What we're looking at here is you probably have a couple issues. If you installed those gears yourself, they might not be shimmed correctly. They might be too tight in that mech box and that motor is working just too hard because it's fighting the resistance. The, the gears are up against each other. So when they try to turn, they're just like that. They're just dra dragging on each other as the gear spins on the other one. Um, if they're shimmed right, they're going to kind of float and they're just going to be smooth. They're only going to touch in a small area where the shims are and they're going to be nice in that. And there's not going to be a lot of play and looseness. That could be issue one. Issue two, and this would be easier to fix, is your motor might not be adjusted correctly. It could be in too far or out too much. Now, when you say with the sound and the metal and the grinding, if it's out all the way, it's going to have like a horrible grinding sound, but it's probably not going to cause the motor to heat up like you're talking about. So my guess is if there's a motor issue, you're talking about it in too far. So that motor screw's been pushed all the way in, the motor's in there. Sometimes the motor gets sucked in. It happens, even though the screw's set right. Um, take that motor cap off the bottom of your M4 or if it's an AK, you know, take it, open it up, pop it out of the cage, put, the, put it back in the cage, adjust the screw back until it starts to sound smooth. There's some actually good motor adjustment videos on the internet that will kind of help you as a guide to listen to see if, you know, what the right sound is for that. But it sounds to me your problem is one of these, especially with the motor heating up, like you say, and the grinding sound and all that. It's probably motor adjustment. It's either probably in too far, like I said, or the shimming on the gears is bad, or there's something going on in there, like uh, maybe something broke off, like part of a piston or something's in there causing the, the gears, if you haven't reshimmed them, to maybe have an issue. So this is a time where you definitely want to do some tech work. Um, if you're not comfortable, obviously take it to a shop, a professional shop that does good work, have them look at it for you, but check that motor adjustment first. Try backing out a little bit, a couple shots as you back it with an Allen's key or whatever flathead screwdriver, whatever the adjustment point is on that, and just keep taking shots until maybe, oh, hey, this starts to sound a little better, it sounded really rough, and now it sounds a little smoother, then you could be good to go at that point. It could be an easy fix you can do at home. Efrain Arario writes, great video this week. I was curious, when did you decide to grow out your beard? I remember you mentioned an airsoft story associated with it. I can't imagine you without one. It suits you quite well. Thank you, sir. Uh, well, the beard actually came as a total accident. I was, you know, always a little clean shaven, maybe a little day or two old scruff, you know, kind of like that five o'clock shadow thing going. And then I was playing one time uh, at Bad Karma Airsoft, God, probably 12 years ago, a long time ago. And I took a nasty one, came around the corner, I was playing against uh, another team with friends on it. Uh, my buddy just saw me, boom, quick, just instinctively shot. It's probably like five feet away, no big deal. We do not have an engagement distance. Fair rules, I wasn't wearing a mesh mask at the time. I, I changed my uh, rule after that, started wearing lower masks always since then, and took a hit like right here. I saw it coming, so I just, I kind of turned a little bit. I was just down on my rifle, so that was kind of it. So boom, he just popped me right there, and it was a nice big bleeder, you know, like, ugh, down. It didn't go in, but it was pretty nasty. Uh, so I could not shave 
for a while, for like a week or two. And it just started. And it was itchy at first, and that's how it grew out. And I was like, hmm, doesn't look that bad. Actually, you know, it fills in okay. And, you know, many, many years later, and a few extra gray hairs hiding in here now, um, it's still around. It's kind of become my look, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, that's the story behind the beard. I wish there was something more dramatic or whatever. But uh, yeah, it just kind of grew out and it stuck with me and uh, it's been there ever since. Adriana Steves writes, hey Jonathan, I want to know, is it a bad thing to go airsofting in the rain? Will the rain mess up your airsoft guns? While your airsoft gun is an electrical machine, for the most part, you're probably okay, unless it's just crazy rain. Now, if you have a system of PTW, uh, this is like kind of an exception. Those are no, <laughs> don't, don't take them in the rain. They're not system of PTW plus rain, bad idea, a very bad idea, unless you waterproof your boards and all that. If you have one of those, you're gonna know what I'm talking about and you don't even need my advice here anyway. But when you go play, you should be okay. I mean, like don't have the battery wires just like sitting outside. Like if you're running into an external battery, you get it taped to your stock or something and the wires are there. You probably don't want to do that. Maybe put some good uh, weather sealing tape around that connection so water doesn't get in there and short out your battery. Um, go to submerge your gun if you don't, you know, can't help it because that will cause a lot of problems. And if you have a MOSFET in your gun, you definitely don't want to get it underwater because that will cause a lot of troubles or any kind of a MOSFET or electrical trigger system will cause some serious issues there. But for the most part, yeah, I mean, you're okay. I mean, you can get a motor wet and dry it out and it'll be still run just fine. I mean, it's not a big deal. I mean, you can deal with corrosion and things like that. Anytime you introduce water to metal parts, you can have oxidation and, and other things. But Overall, some rain is absolutely not going to hurt your airsoft gun. I played so many times in the rain with an AEG and had no problem. Uh, even easier to go with gas blowbacks, no big deal there. You just have to clean them. Just make sure you clean it like a real firearm. You know, like just take it, you know, after it's played in the rain or whatever. Give it a good once over. Uh, so of course, sniper rifles like this, you know, like just that, it's super easy there, no big deal either. Uh, but yeah, for an AG, shouldn't be any problem. Just make sure you keep those electronics like MOSFETs nice and dry on the inside and don't submerge the gun. All right, that's it for questions this week, which means it is time for the Code Red Headsets video recommendation of the week. And this one actually comes from last week. I'm going to do one this week. You know who I'm talking about, Mr. 12. Hang tight. You'll be 13, I promise. Um, this one comes from Koss, a sport, uh, also a bunch of other of you guys. Must have been a writing campaign. And actually, it's a guy I know really well. I always, sometimes you forget the ones closest to you. It's a random guy, Kev. He's got a great channel. Again, another one of these channels, below a thousand subscribers. Things like at 801 as of today. I'm always surprised that these channels aren't getting more subs that are out there doing it. Um, but he says, of course, check out Random Guy Kev's channel. He does some airsoft stuff. Of course, he does some other things too, but he also does airsoft, does some montages. I've got a montage going right now on it. Good channel if you guys want to watch some gameplay. This one, he's got the old tracer unit out. I love tracers for CQB. You can see where the BB's going and all that. It's just so worth the watch. Um, and of course, he shows you know, the good and the bad. I always like that too. So it's not like, ah, oh, I got 20 kills and never died. No, you, you really died. I, I mean, I died too. But yeah, he actually was uh, good playing. I enjoyed watching it. He's out of New Jersey, so it's a totally different field we're not used to seeing. It's not the usual SoCal stuff or anything like that. But definitely worth the click if you guys are into some gameplay. So if you guys like it, as always, I have a link over in the corner here or especially down in the description box below for the channel and the video. And if you guys like what you see and you mash that sub button, go over there and tell them I sent you. Well, as always, everybody, thank you so much. That is it for this week. And next week, of course, it'll be full of your questions yet again. Don't forget, put them in the comment section below. Vote up your favorites. I read them all every single week. And also recommend your channels, whether it's your channel or a channel you love to watch. I discover so many great channels because of you guys and gals out there. And I want to share those, of course, with everybody else. It doesn't have to be English speaking. It can be any language in the world. I, I always love Airsoft is universal. You don't have to speak the language to know the game and the sport and the hobby. But anyway, until next week, go out, play some airsoft, have some fun, but no matter what you do, call your freaking hits.